And in the army, I always joke that if you are good at cardio, you can get away with murder. Throughout my time at selection, qualification course, and even on the teams, the biggest thing that hurt guys the most were their addictions. So I made it all throughout the special forces selection and the qualification process without getting sick, nor did I ever get hurt throughout that entire process. So I need you guys to understand as special forces candidates that physical fitness goes hand in hand with diet and enabling you to get through that entire year long to two year long process. In this video, guys, I'm going to share with you guys what worked for me while I was going through the Special Forces qualification process. Hopefully, this information serves you in one way, shape, or form. So before we start this video, guys, let me preface it with this, right? I'm not a dietitian, nor do I play one on television. However, my entire life revolves around fitness and making sure that I eat right. Now, granted, I still have my cheat days here and there. However, Working out and dieting has been a way of life for me. And if you're venturing into special operations, then it needs to be for you also, right? So let's start off with this, guys. You got to understand that throughout the special forces qualification course or even selection, there's going to be different phases that requires you to eat certain things, all right? We'll start off with selection. So selection is a endurance based type of course, right? Endurance and stamina. You have to be fast to make it through selection. You've got to be able to max the physical requirements going into selection, right? I just had a call the other day and I told the individual that I was speaking with, max your push-ups, max your sit-ups, max your run you know those are the ones you're gonna get tested on at least the very first week. So why not study the playbook, knock them out every day. So when I was going out to selection, it was probably the leanest I've ever been. I went to selection weighing approximately 175 pounds. And leading up to selection, guys, I was focused on getting my cardio to where it needed to be plus some. So eating for selection, you know, the four or five months that I had leading up to it, I was eating, you know, your chicken breasts, right? Your white rice, followed by your broccoli. Right? I ate that religiously. In the morning, I would have egg whites and oatmeal. Around lunchtime, guys, I would have salmon and then another vegetable. That was my regiment leading up to selection for approximately four months, guys. I wanted to be as lean as I could be. And that was my way of getting to that point because I knew the first week or so of selection was all physical gates. And in the army, I always joke that if you are good at cardio, you can get away with murder. So I wanted to run fast. I wanted to knock out my push-ups, and I wanted to crush my sit-ups and pull-ups. I was focused on getting past the first week. All right. Uh, and that's what I trained for. And then going into land nav, it was the same concept, right? Yeah, I had that rucks up on my back, but I still had to be able to go the distance. I still had to be able to move fast throughout the terrain. And I sucked at land nav, so I relied on my cardio to get me to where I wanted to be, all right? And then team week, guys, I don't care how strong you are, like that thing's gonna break you off. So I trained in eight for the first two phases, and then team week, I just showed up and gave it my all, all right? So again, guys, Eating for selection, get lean, right? You want to go there in the best shape of your life, right? Now, fast forward past selection, right? Now, I'm going into SUT, small unit tactics. So, for small unit tactics, I ate differently, right? I started to bulk up. I started to get heavier because small unit tactics is like ranger school on steroids. So, I know I was going to be burning a lot of calories. So, Going back to home station, clearing, PCSing, and getting to Fort Bragg, I ate a shit ton of pasta, shit ton of bread, all right? Shit ton of chicken, shit ton of steaks, all right? I just wanted to beef up and add some size because I knew I was going to burning a shit ton of calories once I got there and started SUT. Now, granted, I still had to PT myself to make sure that I was still 
able to meet the prerequisite when it came to physical fitness. But at that point, I wasn't worried about maxing, you know, the PT test on the extended scale, right? I knew once I hit the qualification course, it was a long game. So I had to be able to sustain myself to make sure I got through each phase accordingly. So selection, lean, SUT, bulk up, make sure once I got to SUT, I had calories to burn. Now after SUT for me guys was Sear School. Now I'm talking about we had like a week in between. So guess what I did guys? And another thing that I did too, I also gauge which phases within the Special Forces Qualification course had physical gates. Physical gates meaning PT tests, you know, time rucks because that also dictate how I train and how I ate. Now, if I knew going into SUT, there was gonna be a PT test at the very beginning, more than likely I won't get too big, right? I'll make sure that I ate right and I'm still doing PT, making sure that I'm big enough to handle the stress that's gonna be put on my body. However, still able to pass the physical gates. So when I got to SARE school, there was no physical gates and I knew that they were gonna starve us at the very end. So I fattened up a little bit leading up to share school right pasta burgers fries whatever i could think of right i ate it because i knew i was gonna leave that school a lot lighter than when i went in sure enough i got to share school around 175 ish when i left i was you know about 165 ish pounds right that's how much weight i lost doing share school guys now leaving share school i went right into language school now, language school, there was no gate at the very beginning, and it was four and a half months of language. So during that phase, I got really bulky, right? So I was lifting a lot, shit ton of protein shakes, egg whites, chicken, steak, pasta. I started to become a monster doing language school, right? Because I also knew that there was no other physical gates leading to graduation right after language school was robin sage and robin sage you're out there living amongst the locals right you're gonna be walking you won't have you know like the four course meal at any given time you got to go out and buy off the local economy and essentially cook your own food at this base right so i got real thick at language school because i knew going into robin sage food was gonna be limited. So that's how I ate throughout the qualification course, guys. You gotta know where your gates are gonna be, know when to dial it back, and know when to pile it on. Again, throughout the entire process, I kept track of my physical fitness proudness, right? At no point in time did I ever got to the point where I was like, oh, I might fill a PT test today. That was never in the back of my mind. That was never a problem because as I ate, I make sure I stayed up with my physical fitness. Now that's the qualification course, guys. Let's talk about deployments, eating for deployments. So now this concept applies also, right? So within my specific ODAs, prior to every deployment, we did what's called a workup, right? Typically, we know well ahead of time where we're going to be deploying to. For example, all my deployments to Afghanistan, I knew the area that I was going to. I knew if it was mountain heavy or if it was somewhere flat, right? So, for example, sort of south down in Kandahar, that's all flat. Sort of east down in Jabat area, it's all mountains, right? So, I tailored my eating and also my fitness plan to the area that I was going to. Now, if I'm going on a J set where there won't be a lot of strenuous activities where I'm just training guys, that's typically my time to bulk up, get a little bit heavier because I know I'm not gonna be running and gunning every day, scaling mountains and walking for hours on end. So that's how I handle my deployments. Let's finish this video off with addictions. Now, throughout my time at selection, qualification course, and even on the teams, the biggest thing that hurt guys the most were their addictions, right? I'm not talking about drugs or any of that stuff, guys. I'm talking about addiction to coffee, sugar, cigarettes, dip. Now, you gotta understand, throughout selection, there is no smoke breaks. There is no chewing tobacco. There is no coffee being served to you every morning. You gotta keep that in mind, guys, going into selection. Same thing with the qualification course, right? SUT, 
when we're out in the field, there is no smoking, chewing tobacco, or coffee, right? So if you're one of those dudes that's addicted and you got to have it at any given time, dudes, I've seen guys turn into assholes because they weren't able to have their cup of coffee or go around the corner to smoke a cigarette. And when they did that and it was time to conduct pair evals, it showed. I've seen a lot of guys not get selected or not make it through the qualification course because they got hangry or they got upset because they were going through withdrawals from not having those items, right? So if I were you and you have one of those problems, start weaning yourself off a couple of weeks leading into whatever training event that you're going through, right? Guys, I hope this information was helpful. If you have anything that you can add, leave it in the comment section below, guys. Until next time, take care of yourselves.